Apple recently announced significant improvements to Safari coming in the next version of macOS this fall. But with these changes, is Safari finally able to compete with Google Chrome? I've compared Safari against Chrome in the past, and I've always wanted to like Safari, but it never quite felt polished enough to be a Chrome replacement. So what's new in Safari that could finally dethrone Chrome? Well, this past June, Apple unveiled a new version of Safari in their upcoming release of macOS called Sonoma. Apple is finally adding profiles to Safari. This is a feature I can't imagine living without in a browser, and I've been using it in Chrome ever since the feature was released. Safari's implementation of profiles is all right. There's no easy way to switch between profiles. You have to right click the Safari icon in the dock. It feels really clunky. I am only using the beta version of Sonoma to test these new features specifically. For all of my other Safari testing, I'm using Ventura to ensure that I have a stable version to compare against Chrome. Apple also added other new features like enhanced rich search results and sharing passkeys with friends and family. You can also save websites as desktop apps and they've improved the private browsing experience. Saving a website as a desktop app is an interesting feature. It works well for platforms like Facebook and Twitter, so you can have a dedicated icon on your dock and not have all the distractions of the web browser, but you don't have to worry about updates because it's still a website and not an actual desktop app. However, these new features are meaningless if Safari isn't good enough to beat Google Chrome. And the first thing I take note of when testing a new browser is the interface. I'll be honest, I've never quite liked the Safari interface and I still don't like it. It feels radically different from most browsers and I don't think that's a good thing. It's both incredibly stale and confusing at the same time. The tabs are under the browser bar instead of over it and everything just feels bare. There's no favicons in the favorites bar and there's a lot of dead space. You can choose the compact mode, but this just gives me a headache. It's even more confusing than the standard mode and I'm not really sure why somebody would want to use this. I do like that you can fully customize the interface down to which buttons are gonna be on the browser bar and the exact placement. That's not something you can do in Chrome and I do appreciate the flexibility. The other critical thing when I evaluate browsers is speed and performance. I don't have a super scientific method for testing speed on a browser, but I did run a set of standardized tests on browserbench.org. Both Chrome and Safari scored similarly in Jetstream. Chrome performs significantly better than Safari in Motion Mark and Speedometer. Once again, I don't have a super scientific method for testing the speed of a browser, but I can say that Chrome feels noticeably faster. I honestly expected that Safari would take the lead, especially because Apple claims Safari is the most optimized browser on Mac, and I actually kinda buy that because Apple is great at optimizing their own software for their own devices, but for whatever reason, Chrome just seems faster. I also noticed some websites didn't load properly on Safari, and every time this would happen, I would open Chrome and load the same website, and sure enough, it would load properly every time. Websites are optimized for Chrome and Chromium due to its popularity, and since Safari uses Apple's own WebKit engine, a lot less websites are optimized for it. What I like about Chrome and Safari is that they're both well optimized for hitting that subscribe button, so don't miss out on that feature. On the thread of less optimization, and support, I find that Safari lacks some of the browser extensions I like to use. It does have the absolute essentials like 1Password, AdGuard, Honey, and Grammarly, but some of the lesser known extensions I enjoy like TubeBuddy, vidIQ, and Unsplash Instant are unavailable. There's no denying that Chrome has the most comprehensive collection of browser extensions, and this is because developers can make one extension for Chrome and it will work on all Chromium browsers. Chrome, Brave, Opera, and even Microsoft Edge are just a few of the Chromium browsers that would support Chrome extensions. Safari extensions are different because they have to be developed from scratch, so the developer has to put in all the work of coding something that can only work on Safari instead of all the Chromium browsers. I also noticed that my extensions didn't sync easily between my Macs. This is supposed to work without a problem, but half of the extensions synced and the other half I had to go to the app store and download them manually. And in Chrome, it is a seamless experience. I've never had a problem with any data syncing. It just works between devices and it's quick. I really expected Safari to take the lead in more areas, but overall, I've been pretty disappointed with the performance so far. It's really only when it comes to the Apple ecosystem
ecosystem that Safari starts to shine. If you like to use Apple Pay, you have to use Safari, and Apple Pay works flawlessly on Safari. Safari also claims to offer the best battery life of any browser on Mac, but like the speed, I don't really have a good scientific way of testing this claim. Safari even has little touches, like the ability to autofill a two-factor authentication field with a text message you received on your iPhone. You may be familiar with this feature in iOS, and I had no idea that some form of it existed on macOS, but you have to be using Safari to utilize it. I also like the reader feature in Safari that takes away the clutter and distraction of news websites. I'm sure you can get a similar experience through plugins on Chrome, but it's cool that Safari has had this feature built in for years. In every way functionally, Safari is just okay. Chrome definitely offers the better experience, but there's another consideration when evaluating a web browser, and that's privacy. Have you ever thought about why Google offers a web browser? Google is a data company. They make their money by selling ads and displaying them on their services like Google Search, Gmail, and YouTube. The more Google knows about you, the more they can target relevant ads, and that means they can make more money per user. Google Chrome is a way for Google to ensure its own services work as smoothly as possible. When it's easy to access Google Search, Gmail, YouTube, Google Maps, and all their services, you spend more time on it. And the more time you spend using these services, the more data they can collect on you. Safari is one of the few web browsers left that's not using Chromium. Apple uses its own proprietary WebKit engine, and this means that Google cannot see user data outside of its own services. Safari has a tracker blocker built in, and that makes it harder for companies like Google to track users across multiple websites, and that makes it harder for them to target relevant ads to you. At the end of the day, you're gonna have to decide how important functionality is over privacy. There's no denying that Chrome is the faster, better optimized browser, but I've always felt icky using Chrome. And in fact, for the last six months, I've been using Brave and I don't miss Chrome at all. But Brave is still powered by Chromium, which means Google could still be spying on my user data. Safari is continuing to improve, and the addition of profiles is a good sign that Apple still cares about it and is actively trying to improve it. But at the end of the day, the functionality and extension support in Safari is just not good enough for me to use it as my full-time browser. I have considered using Safari as my personal browser and using a browser like Brave as my work browser when I need extensions like vidIQ and TubeBuddy, but this would just be so chaotic and confusing. In fact, maybe the best web browser isn't Chrome or Safari at all. And if you want my take on the best overall web browser, I have an entire comparison video here.